All right, so Betaflight 3.4.0 RC1 is out today. So let's take a look. Okay, so before you flash up, do make sure to go into your existing uh, setup and do a diff. So go into the CLI, type diff, and go ahead and select all this and copy and paste it into a Word doc. After you've pasted that into Notepad or Word doc, go in and remove any of the features that are flight critical features. So filtering, PID settings, all that stuff, you wanna take that out of there actually. And that might be not what you're thinking. What my recommendation is like the OSD, if that, you know, some of these variable names change. So if the OSD variable name changes on you and it, it does, it's not going to make the thing crash or do something stupid or weird. So it's fairly innate. Some of these other things like uh, auxiliary switches and beeper setups and, and some of the other things, you do have to know a little bit with this method to make sure you clean out what's non-critical. And anything that is a critical feature, you do need to review in the GUI after you flash over and paste this in to make sure it's set right, like fail safe and flight modes and things of that nature. So just kind of is what it is. If you're not uh, up for that, just do screenshots of your existing setup before you flash over. I've done that for a long time because I didn't like or trust the copy paste thing. Uh, just had a screen setups and just go through it, you know, screen by screen. There's not that many screens. There's like four or five and that are really the ones, so it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so after you flash it over, I recommend going in and hit reset settings. Even if you had full chip erase done, I do this all the time. Uh, I've, I've seen weird things, so I just, this might be a superstition of mine, but just hit reset settings if you want my two cents. I do it twice, actually. And then I, uh, after that, I'll hit calibrate uh, my accelerometer, and then I'll go in and get it all reset up or paste the diffs. So, Anyways, so clean this out. This is the one I have that's non-critical stuff. After we then flashed over, uh, which I've already done, I'm going to go into the CLI. Again, paste this. I'm going to do a copy and paste and put that in there. So just select all, copy, go to here, hit paste, hit enter. It sets it all up, type save, and then we're off to the races. If you are pasting a diff, I recommend you definitely do not bring any of the filter settings, the old filter settings over. A lot of the variable names aren't going to line up and or your PIDs. There's the new default PIDs, filter settings, and, and D-term stuff set up in Betaflight 3.4. Uh, you should give that a fly, honestly, and see how you like it first before you put in your customized stuff. You can go from there, but give, give the defaults a shot here. Uh, they've, they've all been modernized. After you have your setup all squared away again, you're thinking you're getting ready to fly here. Definitely go to the GitHub repository to the releases. I'll drop that link below. Go down and give a read through uh, this important information about upgrading. And check that out. I'm not gonna go word for word through everything, but there's beacon improvements, deset term weight, uh, some changes there if you want some sharper performance. Uh, there's some it features on RSSI where you can uh, set some things differently there. There's uh, filter overhaul, GPS rescue mode, all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna to try to hone in on some of the things that I think are important or that, you know, or kind of piqued my interest. So I made this little doc. I'll drop that link below as well. Uh, essentially, this is the same thing as what's on the release page. Just in the, I generated this before the release uh, came last night. So I had this prior. So things are in a little bit different order. But uh, what I tried to do is put things in uh, flight focused improvements versus uh, just you know fixes and, and minor things. That's not in the same exact orders as what the devs have there, but that's irrelevant. Um, iTerm Relax is a, a big one. So I'm just gonna kind of review some of this stuff and then I'll future videos here to go through the, the more of the details on it. But iTerm Relax uh, is a new feature that you can turn on and off. It's off by default. Uh, if you type get relax or get iterm, you can see the variables to turn it on. You can check out the, the repository here. It's still in testing mode, but I've tested it. I was in build uh, eight 
99, which was, I don't know, 10 builds ago, and it, uh, it works pretty well. Some of the times when you have bounce back, that's because of iTerm dragging your quad around to do the bounce back. Because you have like a slow, soft bounce back, that's iTerm. That's not your P or D. And you can increase P or D to um, fight that or lower P, but it's not going to, your, 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 the core issue is the I term. So this relax uh, feature takes care of that. Feed forward's a new proposed alternative on D set point weight. Uh, I have not really messed with that yet. I will be doing that soon. Uh, RC smoothing is a new way to smooth your input commands. So right now, uh, legacy way is interpolation works, works pretty well, but it has some juts yet, and I'll show that in a future video, where it makes the D term jump from one side uh, to another. The smoothing it with low pass filters uh, does not do that anymore, it has more smooth transitions between the changes, and but there's some new settings, so I'll, I'll talk about that in detail. And I'm gonna, just in a second here, I'm gonna go to, to some uh, my defaults and see if you like those. Cascading of D-term filters is a new feature, so you're not going to see these exotic BQRC or FKF or Buttersworth filters. Those are in previous builds, and if you're interested in testing some of that stuff for yourself, uh, you can go to Jenkins and download a, an older build, I think. I'll have to get the numbers. Go ahead and drop a comment if you're interested in that. We can coordinate. I've done the testing, released it in previous videos, other people's as well. The reason they're taken out is because they all basically produce a PT1 filter, which is there. So you still have the stage one, stage two filtering like you had in 3.3. You just, it's now instead of BQRC for one and the PT1 and the other, just both PT1 or both biquad. I don't know who the heck would do biquad, but uh, that same cascading of filtering is available on the D-term as well. So now you have a D-term low pass one, D-term low pass two. So the defaults again are with those on. So let's bounce over here. I'm gonna show you this. So again, the, the PID defaults, the D-term defaults here, you can see uh, have all been modernized, updated. Anti-gravity has been set to five. Personally, what I think everybody should do is set their rates and just fly the defaults. See how you like them first before you start monkeying with stuff. These are more modernized. Simple things like, I'm not gonna flip back to the configuration tab, but the dynamic filters on by default. If I go over to the filter settings, all the static notches are off by default and the D-term low pass filter set to PT1 by default. You can see the gyro low pass filter, gyro low pass filter one is set to 100 hertz instead of 90, so that's up some for some reduced latency. And the configurator has not been updated yet to show gyro low pass two and then D-term low pass two, um, but you can go ahead and flip to the CLI, type get low pass, and then you can see those variables. So you can see it's set to 300 for the gyro and 200 for the D-term. So flipping back to here, uh, the software has been optimized to run better on F7 boards. So you should be able to get faster loop times and gyro speeds on F7 boards. There is a new SP Racing F3 board out there that has a dual gyro. It's by uh, Dominic, uh, Mr. Clean Flight. That's probably not going to be able to run at 3232 because it's two gyros it's trying to run, not just one. But other F7s, from what I understand, can run at 32, 32 now um, with this optimization. So there you go. Dynamic filter, uh, the code has been improved for it uh, running on 16, 32K, so that's been optimized. The all spin recovery is pretty cool. It's for clipping gates in racing. It will automatically trigger if it has a, a fast yaw spin to try to help you recover from that, so you can turn it on and off. Throttle boost uh, helps with just that it boosts your throttle. It's basically like D-term set point weight for your throttle. You know, my recommendation is to apply smoothing on throttle as well as uh, roll and pitch. Throttle boost helps to, that does add latency to your throttle. Throttle boost compensates for that. And even if you don't, it, it, it just, again, gives you a faster moving or a boost in throttle. It doesn't give you more power, it just advances it of your requested uh, command. And from what I, you know, from my take on it, if you're really jamming the throttle quick, you want it to increase in speed as fast as can, and that's what throttle boost helps you with, especially if you're about to hit the ground. So um, check that out. I term uh, yaw error, uh, some fixes there, and throttle limiting feature. 
basically clips off the top end of your throttle so that your PID loop doesn't hit up against 100% and cause negative spikes on the other motors. Uh, it has to do with air mode and so on and so forth. So clipping off the very top, maybe instead of 100% throttle, we're getting up to 95% throttle can give you less noise at the higher range. Other features include uh, SD card reader, uh, basically turns your flight controller into a micro SD card reader. So when you're plugging in the USB, you can go to the command prompt in Betaflight, type in MSC, and it will flip over, and then it will come up as a drive letter instead of being able to connect in Betaflight with it. Problem is then you have to unplug and replug to be able to get in the configurator. It really depends if you have great access to your SD card or not, and you can just take it out easier or not. If you don't have great access, this gives you another option. Gyro, digital low pass filter simplification, instead of all the different cutoff values, uh, those have been removed. Now you have normal, uh, experimental, or uh, 1K sampling modes. Just leave it as normal, unless you really want to uh, play with experimental. Parallelize mode lets you parallelize your quad. It's a, it's a mode that you can flip into. If you get in a race and your quad goes down and you can't pick it up on the track, it basically paralyzes it until you power cycle it. So you can check out the pull request on that. Uh, GPS rescue mode is, I think, huge. A lot of you know cruisers or whatnot uh, doing long range, you put a GPS module on your quad for 18 bucks. And uh, a lot of people want that feature so that if they go out of range, it will automatically return home. Well, the only really way to do that is iNav, but iNav is it's just not geared for five inch race quads. Pid loops run slower, it seems to me, unless I'm missing something, and you don't have D-shot, and it's just, it's made for bigger crafts or wings and things of that nature. So with this feature being now in beta flight, I believe that should basically serve the need for what people are really flipping back and forth for. So you can have the best of both worlds. We can have all the advanced racing features or acro features, but still have that if you want to throw a GPS module on there and still have it return to home if you get out of range. Gyro calibration, the, the uh, moron threshold uh, <laughs> command name has been changed, so just be aware of that if you do need to up that for to get your board to arm or calibrate in 32K. Some 32K gyros need that increased. Acro trainer basically lets you be in acro mode, not in auto level mode but it does still limit the angle of the quad so you don't get out of control with it as you're training. So that's just a nice, um, kind of a new, I would say newbie command. But, um, and then beacon commands are some fixes and whatnot with the beacons, your uh, ESC beacons when you're in D-shot. So those are there. This just goes down into some fixes if you're interested in that. And then some minor things, there's some OSD updates you can now see your cpu temperature on the osd if anti-gravity is uh, activated or not so on and so forth so there's just some nice little things and then i round off here with some great links on d set point weight since that seems to be a hot topic uh, over the last month or so you got to check out this link before you go read through this this is uh, by the beta flight devs this is basically touches on a lot of the things i've touched on already but in finer detail uh, these guys are, you know, definitely the experts pr proposing this stuff and, you know, writing it up and implementing the code. Uh, talks about how RC smoothing takes out the little uh, notches that you would had with RC interpolation. Uh, talks about when and when not to use, you know, different filter recommendations. And those are up to 150. I was up to 170. Talks about should I use the dynamic notch or not. Um, all in agreement with all this stuff. Should I use static notches? Totally in agreement here. I use a static notch because I have a very defined peak when I'm at full throttle. Like as shown right here, this is full throttle. This is my normal cruising throttle, you know, uh, racing around, you know, doing tight turns and stuff like that, flips and rolls. But essentially, this is my throttle band. This is at the, you know, the hover slash forward flight throttle where I spend most of my time, and this is max peak throttle. So this is better hit with a static notch, really drops that down. So this is pre-notch, uh, so the pitch is the worst axis on this quad, and this is fully filtered. You can see, boom, my noise is just crushed, and I have my digital, or my stage one, or uh, low pass filter one at 170, and my D-term 160. Now there is some D-term noise here, so I'm still exploring is, is what's best there. Gets into the filtering details on the RC smoothing, Definitely check that out, gives recommendations. Uh, I noticed for PPM, 
you need to take that down to 2525. Uh, I felt uh, I term relax and talks about all that good stuff. Uh, throttle boost, speed forward, absolute control, blah, blah, blah. So go read through that. I think between just the defaults and that, you should be good to go. And finally, if you go to tiny.cc forward slash filter calc, I'll take you to kind of the repos my repository here. If you go into, I think it's going to say UAV Tech 3.4 defaults. I'm going to rename that. In there, I have a couple files. This is for 3.3, now 3.4. So we'll just go into the AK one because uh, most people are running that. And you'll see some CLI settings I have that this would be my recommendation. So I would fly the defaults. Uh, which does have throttle boost off and doesn't have smoothing on and it doesn't have eye term relax on and some of these other things doesn't have the clipping turned on and so on and so forth and then if you want to just try pasting this in uh, the throttle boost turns on eye term relax all these features that we kind of touched on and see how you like that and then also for 32k there's a, a file for that as well which would be up here and then that gives you these defaults, which uh, PIDs are a little bit different, filters are a little bit lower because there's more noise that you get along with 32K. That's kind of the downside of 32K. Faster loops, faster calculation, or more samples, um, but you get more noise with that as well. And then also the filter calc tool uh, has been updated so that you have, you know, just as before, the the two stage on the gyro and now you have the two stage on the D term so you can plug in and play around with your filters using that to see your trade-offs and latency versus um, how much attenuation you're getting things of that nature okay well thanks and I hope this helped